So I need to apply turbulent displace to that. So turbulent, turbulent displace to the reflection, the uh, reflection in the water right there. And strange little thing happens when you apply turbulent displace. It uh, shoves things off to the side. I'm not sure why that is, but we can overcome that, overcome that by clicking on motion and sliding this guy back where it belongs. Probably something to do with the size of the wave, but we'll check that out in a second here. Yeah, it's back. Go back to turbulent displace. Maybe it's by the location here above the corner pin. Let me go below corner pin. Nope, same thing happens. So, put the corner pin above it. Does it make a difference? Doesn't see them. Yeah, it makes a difference. So, let me put tur turbulent displace above corner pin. Anyways, let's take a look at turbulent displace. Uh, the amount and the size, we want to basically reduce both those things. It's a little, the waves will be too big. And we want the small, subtle waves here. Complexity has this makes the waves a little bit more, a little busier looking. That might work on a little ripples here. But the real issue is to uh, evolve this over time. That's how you get the animation. So I'm just going to drag through evolution to sort of see what it looks like in terms of how the waves will look. And it looks like that's going to be fine. I think that'll work for me. So we'll just have uh, an amount of 15, size of 44, and little complexity, and uh, I'll evolve this thing. So the, the issue is that I need to keyframe this. So I'm going to go to the beginning of the clip. Back on you. you. Set the keyframe for evolution of zero at that particular point. It could be anything really, but we'll start at zero. And uh, I'll make sure I turn on keyframes, and then I'll go to the end of the clip, and we'll set evolution to let's say 2x. It means that it'll go through the evolution twice. It'll animate two full cycles of whatever the cycle of evolution is. So 2x, and that means now it'll evolve twice. So let's see how that looks as I play this. That's pretty cool. Maybe it's a bit heavy-handed, but uh, it works for me. I'm going to lower the uh, location of it just a little bit to get it more like it's actually in the water. Don't want the shoreline to be re uh, reflecting. That's good enough for our purposes, though. And now I want to do the same thing to the water, so I'm just going to copy Turbulent Displace, right-click on it and copy it, and put it down on the lake shore. Now, something funny is going to happen when I do this, but I'll show you that in a second. So I'll say Paste. So now I've got the lake shore evolving, but unfortunately the trees are evolving too. Oh no, it's an earthquake. It must be California. So what I need to do is I need to isolate just the water instead of the water and the trees. So guess what? I need one more layer. So I'm going to take these three guys and move them up one notch. Make a copy of our little lakeshore. Just put it down there. Actually, it's best to make a copy because this guy is a big picture that I move. So I'll just right click on it, say copy. I'll put the current time indicated to the beginning of this uh, particular set of clips. I'll turn on video 2, the little header, turn off video 3, so when I go paste it'll put the clip right there. It's not critical. I could put it out here in the boondocks and drag it in, but that's alright. I'm going to go paste, which is edit paste or control V on Windows, command V on a Mac. And there it is. There's a link sure exactly duplicated, and now it won't have the ripples in it anymore because this is the solid one without the effect applied. But what I want to do now is apply, I could put a crop on here, just to crop away the edge there, which is easy enough to do. Or I could put on a linear wipe. The linear wipe has a softer edge to it, and so it, it won't be such a hard edge. And since this is kind of a curvy shoreline, I'm, I'm going to try linear wipe instead, instead of a crop. So linear wipe, put that on this guy. What we're going to do basically is wipe up from the bottom. I always forget if it's 180 degrees or... 90 degrees. We'll see how that works. I'll, I'll transition it and see if we, which way it does. I need to turn off the bottom view so I can see what I'm doing here. There we go. So that's the wrong way. Let's go to zero degrees. There we go. Now we've got the, the it's been transitioned so much that I need, I'm actually losing the picture. I'm back. There we are. Try it again. Computer's kind of getting pushed here, all these little things going on. There's that. And now we're getting close. So I'm going to maybe change it to like 35 or something like that, or 30. Let's see what we got. Uh, let's go back to 35. 35, see how that works. Okay, and I'm going to feather a little bit and see how that affects the overall look. Yeah, it's going to work okay, I think. Let's see here. I'm going to take this guy maybe down to 35. Try that like 30, 20, 37. Let's try that one. 
There we go. That works. I'll turn on the bottom line again. See that looks the bottom image. Yeah. Okay. So now we've got the reflection. Let's see how this thing looks now. Yeah, that works. So we got the water reflected. We got the whoops. The things look like they're still moving around, but it's just the uh, just the computer settling down here. Uh, let me get this thing settled down again. Did I? Uh, I think I see what I did there. I copied. Yeah, let me turn that off now. Here we go. I when I copied the clip, I also copied turbulent displace. That was a mistake. So now let's see what it looks like. Excellent day. Now it's working the way it's supposed to work. Okay. When I copied the clip, I also copied the effect that was on the clip. So I, was, so I just turned it off or I could delete it. It could go away. Okay, one last little thing. We need to have this word reflection actually sort of blend in with the water. That the reflection I think is that track there. Let's see. Nope, that's the drop shadow. Let me see here. Which one's the reflection? You yeah, that's the one. This guy is a reflection. I need to have it blend in with the water. And to do that I need to use blending mode inside opacity, this new thing in CS4 also in CS5 of course, and there are many different blending modes if you work with Photoshop you know about these guys. I like overlay in this particular case. It tends to work pretty well with the surface and makes it look like it really is reflecting on the surface. So there folks is what you, how you uh, create the uh, reflection, drop shadow, and uh, reflective surface, and animate the surface, and animate the reflection, and have the reflection blend in. Basically I've got three text layers One's the original, one's the reflection, one's the drop shadow. And then I applied the uh, turbulent displace to create, create the animation. Here I used two versions of the image because I wanted to make sure that only the reflective surface was animating. So I used linear wipe to just to cut in, to reveal the undisplaced one here and to reveal the displaced one down here. And then we applied uh, a little blending mode, overlay in this case, to have the reflection look like it's actually on the surface rather than sort of hovering above it. Hope this helps you guys as you do your homework. See you later.